Watch this. Hall. Gee. Hall. Gee. <laughs> well, this is the Gee Hall Whammy Diddle. It's a folk toy from Southern Appalachia here in the Eastern US. It was typically made by a twig from a mountain laurel shrub, also native to the Eastern United States. But what makes this propeller spin left and what makes this propeller spin right? Is it my commands that I was giving it, the gee and the haul? Well, I could say that because gee is what a farmer would, the command that a farmer would give to a horse, a draft horse, to turn right. Or the farmer might give the command to a draft horse, haul, to turn left. But no, that's not really what's happening here. But it is something that I am doing, okay? So let's take a close look at the whammy diddle and see what makes the propeller turn left or right. As you can see, the shaft of the whammy diddle has a series of notches carved in it. I am rubbing those notches with the rubbing stick. But let's take a look at how I hold my hand with the rubbing stick. Okay, I have my thumb on one side of it, and I'll put my index finger on top of it for just a moment. I'm going to lay it on the shaft of the whammy diddle in the area of the notches, and I'm going to take my index finger, I'm going to drape it over, and at the same time that I am rubbing the notches, my finger is going to rub the shaft. Likewise, when I change direction, my thumb is going to be rubbing the shaft and not my index finger. So let's give it a try and see how this works. First, my index finger will be rubbing the shaft. And look at that. There the propeller starts to spin to the right. That would be the gi position. Now, if I were to say haul, but at the very same time, imperceptibly small motion where my thumb starts running, look what happens. My thumb is rubbing that shaft and it begins to spin to the left. If I say gi, my finger is now rubbing and it spins to the right. But if I say haul again, my thumb is rubbing and it spins to the left. That, in essence, is the secret of the gi haul whammy diddle. Now, why don't we take a look and see how we actually build this gi haul whammy diddle. Now, before I go any further, let me talk about that name, gi haul whammy diddle. How did it get this name? Well, I've already gone over how it got the gi and the haul part of its name. Those are commands given to a draft horse to turn right or to turn left. But what about whammy and diddle? Where did they come from? Well, the definition of wham is with violent abruptness. And the definition of diddle is to make this motion right here, back and forth motion. So the gee haw whammy diddle is a propeller on a shaft that when you diddle the shaft, the propeller changes direction with violent abruptness. And that's how the gee haw whammy diddle got its name. Previously, I mentioned that the whammy diddle was traditionally made from the mountain laurel shrub. And I happen to have a few mountain laurel twigs right here to use for this video demonstration. But if you want to see how to make one using a dowel, visit my blog post on wellversedman.com because I have the complete instructions there using a dowel. But I should say that the instructions are basically the same, whether you're using a dowel or a twig. So let's get started. I like to use my bench hook when I'm working on a project like this. It helps to support the work. And if you'd like to see the measurements and specifications for this bench hook, visit my blog post that I mentioned previously or see it in the video description. I have all the measurements and specifications that you can use to make a bench hook just like this. Now I think the reason why the mountain laurel was traditionally used for the whammy diddle is because the mountain laurel tends to hold on to dead branches and so if you go to a mountain laurel bush you can find some dead branches and the advantage to that is that since they are up on the bush that is not down on the ground they're very, very dry, bone dry, so these are ready to use right off the bush. Now, this particular twig here, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to decide where is the whammy diddle in this twig, and I see one, it looks like right here, this could be the handle, and this could be the rubbing area right here, so I could hold it just like that and rub on this end here, the handle. So let's give this a try, we'll cut this one.
now that I have the whammy that will cut the length, I'm going to use a cabinet scraper to clean the bark off of the part where we're going to be rubbing. We can leave the bark on the handle. Looks kind of neat when you do that anyway. But we need to remove the bark on the shaft of the whammy diddle. So we'll do that with a cabinet scraper. Okay, we've got the bark off, looks pretty good. Now it's time to file some notches. As I hold this whammy diddle blank in my hand, I'm trying to decide where to put the notches. And I hold it in my hand like this, I got a rubbing stick right here. I think that uh, this at top surface is going to be the best place to put the notches. So I'm gonna clamp this to my bench hook to carve the notches or file the notches. Now I have the whammy diddle stick clamped to my bench hook, I'm going to use a 5 30 seconds chainsaw file to carve the notches in this particular whammy diddle stick. So I've determined to put the notches in this part of my whammy diddle stick. So I'm going to start right here by with the chainsaw file and I'm going to cut one notch simply filing it into position. Get one started that's going to be our reference point for the rest of them. That looks like a pretty good notch right there. Maybe a little bit too deep. Okay, here's what I do. I put that chainsaw uh, file right next to the other groove that I just made. And no need to measure. Just one groove next to the other. Spaced one chainsaw file width apart. That looks about right. The next step is to drill a small hole in the end of the whammy diddle shaft. I have a small brad what I'm going to use for the propeller and I have a drill bit that is exactly the same size as the brad that I'm going to insert into the end of the whammy diddle. I'm going to use a small hand drill and I'm going to drill from a horizontal position because I find that a little bit easier in this type of setup. I use a small punch to start a hole for the drill bit. I try to get it centered as much as possible but sometimes I don't always get it in the center. That's okay. As long as the nail is inserted parallel to the shaft, that's what's important. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center. Now that I have the hole drilled, I will insert the nail just to test it, test fit it, see how it fits. And the hole is exactly the same size as the brad and it slides right in, but it's tight enough that it's not going to fall out either. So that'll be perfect for holding our propeller on the nail. Now it's time to make a propeller for this whammy diddle. You can use a couple of things to make propellers. On the whammy diddles that I made previously, I used a very thin a piece of wood for the propeller. But on this one I'm going to carve a propeller from the mountain laurel twig. Do yourself a favor. Don't start off by cutting the propeller to length. Then it becomes very difficult to carve with a sharp knife, especially when you're carving so close to your hand. So leave yourself a room by using a stick and carving from the end of the stick. I've already started this propeller and uh, I'm going to finish that in just a second here. So carve it on the end of a stick such as this. I use a Sloyd knife to carve the propeller. And be careful with the Sloyd knife. This Sloyd knife is razor sharp. So I use a Kevlar glove and a thumb protection on my hand. Once I have the propeller carved fairly well, pretty close, uh, I will have to cut it off to finish it. And when I cut it off, I'll just have one small end of the propeller to finish. Now, I have finished carving the propeller, and I have marked and drilled a hole in the center of the propeller. 
I'm going to test fit it on the nail to see how well it fits. It should fit on the nail fairly loose because it needs to spin on the nail. And it's spinning fairly well on this nail. Okay. If by chance you test fit it on the nail and it's a little bit tight because the drill bit that you used is the same diameter as the nail, you can take the drill bit, hold it in one hand, and simply insert it in and out of the hole. And it's essentially using the drill bit like a little file. You can open up the hole a little bit more and make it looser. This nail fits pretty well through the hole, and now I want to see if the propeller is balanced. I do that by spinning the propeller to see where it stops. Oh, that one works pretty good. It's important to have the propeller balanced. When it stops horizontally like this, that's the best scenario. If you find that one side of the propeller is heavier than the other, that is, every time you spin it, it tends to end up with one side down, you can take a little piece of sandpaper and rub it on the sandpaper and sand off a little bit, and that will lessen the weight and balance out the propeller. So we're almost ready to install the Whammy Diddles propeller. Before we do that, we need to do a couple more things. It turns out that it's important that there be some friction on the nail, that is friction between the nail and the propeller. That helps the propeller work better. And so what I do is I take a piece of coarse sandpaper or a file, and I'm going to run it up and down the nail a couple of times. I want to scratch the nail. I want some lengthwise scratches on this nail. Okay, that's good. And the end of the whammy diddle needs to be a little bit convex. We want to reduce the friction that the propeller may have when it rubs against the whammy diddle shaft. So I'll do that by sanding a little bit of a convex shape on the end of the whammy diddle. Okay, let's give it a test fit. Insert the nail through the propeller. Insert the propeller into the whammy diddle stick. Leave the nail out just a little bit so we have some play there. Yep, spins freely. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Will this propeller spin when we rub the whammy diddle stick? Oh yeah, look at that. It spins to the right to the gee position pretty well. Can we get it to spin into the hull or to the left? There it goes, look at that. It goes to the left as well. So successful whammy diddle... <laughs> a successful whammy diddle build. <laughs> now that this whammy diddle is finished, Let's talk about some problems that you may encounter. One problem that I've had is sometimes the whammy diddle has a tendency to turn easily in one direction but doesn't want to turn in the other direction. And this particular one I just created has that tendency but there's a way around that. So let's check it out. First of all, I can get it to spin in the gee position very easily. It's coming to my right and spinning freely. When I want to rub my thumb against it and get it to spin in the hull, that is, spin to my left, it doesn't really want to do that. So I can make it spin to the left by doing a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure on my thumb against this. A little bit more pressure, and I'm going to turn the whammy diddle stick so that I'm rubbing the sides of these edges here that's going to encourage this propeller to spin in the other direction. So let's give it a try. We're going in the gee position. My finger is rubbing. Now let's get it to spin in the other direction. I'm putting a fair amount of pressure with my thumb and I'm rubbing the sides and there it goes. It does spin in the other direction. So I don't know why this particular one has that tendency. It could be because of the crooked stick. Maybe it would be better if the stick were long in one direction and didn't have a bend in it. I don't know. But again, there is a way to get around that. So here we go. The gee position, spinning to my right. And here we go. The hole position, spinning to my left. Okay. Before I go, I want to show you one more thing about the mountain laurel plant that's really neat. It turns out the mountain laurel has been called the fastest or one of the fastest plants in the world. 
What does that mean? It doesn't go anywhere, it stays in one place. But there is a part of the mountain laurel that moves very quickly. That is in the flower. It turns out that the flower has 10 stamens. Stamens are the parts of the flower that hold the pollen. And so the stamens are attached to the inside of the petal of the flower. When a bee lands on the flower to try to get nectar, which this flower has very little nectar, by the way, so the bee is trying very hard by probing its tongue into the center of the flower. When that happens, the pollen, the anthers, snap onto the bee's back or even the bee's belly and leave particles of pollen on the bee. So that when the, flat, when the bee travels to another flower, it will transport pollen from one flower to another, thereby fertilizing the plant so it can produce seeds. How about that? So there we have it. We built a whammy diddle from a mountain laurel twig, the authentic plant used in southern Appalachia. And we got it to work. It turns in both directions. I hope you can build one and have fun building one and have fun amazing your friends and kids with the amazing Gee Hall Whammy Diddle. Thank you.